You can call me Daisy. The voice? She's... she's in here. I knew a fella used to talk to his gun. She says her name is Daisy. Daisy, did you see anyone else come by here? No other humans have come within range of my senses. She hasn't seen any other people. Ask your imaginary friend if she saw a machine that looks human. I smelled a machine that sounded as though it moved on two feet. It passed within sensory range 94 minutes ago, and passed out of range 81 minutes ago. She can hear you. The android was here an hour and a half ago. Great. So now Tanner's got an imaginary friend. The storyteller here has Edna. Where's my sidekick? I don't know, Ranger. Do you think it's wise to trust some random brain in a jar that we just met? But she's a dog brain. Dogs don't lie, right? I have been informed on numerous occasions that I am a good dog. A good, good dog. See, she's a good dog. Aren't you, girl? Bark, bark. Woof, woof. Edna says she doesn't like your new friend. Grr. We've wasted enough time. Let's go see if we're right about the android needing biomed gel for its brain. Edna says there's no one else in here. Daisy says she doesn't smell anyone either. Spread out and look for the brain goo storage room. And see if you can find some police headsets so you can hear Daisy. You know, the Chosen One had to find some biomed gel to help a friend back about 40 years ago. An artificial intelligence that was downloaded into a robo-brain. It called itself Skynet, an artificial intelligence computer that managed the Sierra Army Depot. According to itself, Skynet was conceived and developed through the use of alien technology. Four years after the Great War, the AI became self-aware. It waited patiently for over a century before the Chosen One stumbled across it. Skynet just wished to travel and learn more about the world and only needed a body to download into. Some say it did just that and joined the Chosen One on their quest to save the wasteland. So was Skynet just another clone brain, like this android we're chasing? No, I heard it used a monkey's brain. I don't think anyone tried cloning a human brain until this fiasco. Wonder why? Vault City's cloning machine was intended for organ transplants and replacement limbs. And Vault City's leaders weren't exactly outside-the-box thinkers. Vault City. Now there's a place I don't know much about. I was there about 20 years ago. Their guards didn't like the looks of me and wouldn't let me pass the courtyard. If it makes you feel better, even the Chosen One wasn't welcome in Vault City. He went there because it was built on top of Vault 8. It was one of the control vaults that didn't have any intentional flaws. Fully equipped with everything its inhabitants would need during and after the apocalypse. It opened right on schedule few years after the Great War, the people who emerged used their Garden of Eden creation kit to create the most advanced and prosperous city in the wasteland back then. But they weren't big on sharing. Nope. They viewed the outside world with contempt. People from other communities were allowed to trade for access to Vault City's medical equipment, and they could even live in the city. If they agreed to become slaves, Vault City called their labor force servants. But it was slavery all the same. Sounds like they would have loved an evil bastard like the Chosen One. The Chosen One wasn't there to sell slaves. They knew that the Vault Dweller came from Vault 13 and hoped that somewhere inside Vault 8 they could learn the location of the other vaults. When they arrived, they ran into a wall of bureaucracy just as solid as a Vault Tech sealing safe door. Sounds a lot like the Brotherhood used to treat outsiders. At least the Brotherhood didn't make people fill out paperwork for day passes or run them through citizenship exams. The Vault City government made the Chosen One jump through hoops to prove their worth to those pencil pushers. Even then, 
I bet they ended up engaging disreputable activities to gain their citizenship. They had long since done away with the vault techs governing system of an all-powerful overseer. Vault City had a ruling council with a first citizen that still acted like an overseer. Forty years ago was first citizen Joanne Lynette. Her city was having troubles with radiation contamination from Gecko, a city built around a nearby damaged nuclear power plant. The Chosen One might have earned their citizenship the honest way, but Lynette might have just looked the other way after the Chosen One did her dirty work for her. So once the Chosen One gained access to Vault 8, did their fancy gadgets point the way to Vault 13? I find it hard to believe that all of them computers you find in the vaults are somehow connected. Funny thing is, Vault 8's central computer didn't actually have the location of Vault 13, but their records did point the way to... Vault 15. My great-great-great-great-great-grandparents were born there. And information about Vault 13 is... strictly classified. Already been there myself, back when you was in pigtails, little miss. Pigtails? Do pigs chase their tails too? I wish I could chase my tail. No, Daisy. Pigtails is what old hillbillies call having braids in your hair. When the Chosen One was finished with Vault City, they at least knew where to find Vault 15, and they picked up another new friend along the way, a saloon owner by the name of John Cassidy. Cassidy ran the Spittoon, a bar in the Vault City courtyard. It didn't take much convincing to get him to close up shop get out of Vault City. The security force treated outsiders like inferior savages from wastes, and the only reason he stayed around was that he had a heart condition that made it too dangerous to wander the wastes alone. With the rest of the Chosen One's entourage beside him, he felt he could handle anything in the wasteland. But there were forces secretly at work in California that had been plotting a takeover for over a hundred years. Time to die. But that a story for another day.